God is good. And all the time, may God bless all those visitors online. We wish you were here, but we welcome you with just as much enthusiasm. Thank you very much for joining us. Our subject for this evening, then and now. If you have one of these, and you're not using it, please turn them off. Why? So we can have reverence in the house of God. Favor number two, while we're speaking, pray for us. And say, Lord, put your words in their mouths and her hands. It is very, very serious. We want to speak God's words. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And favor number three, think. Isaiah 1.18 come now let us reason together said the Lord. our subject then and now let us pray father thank you for the joy of serving you thank you to God for doing the work angels would love to do thank you father for life for strength for mental clarity thank you for freedom of worship Thank you for the joy of fellowshipping with your people in Ghana in person and online via technology. As we bow in your presence, cleanse us from sin, dear God. Remove every spot and stain that we may better understand your words to us. I humble myself before you and I ask you, dear God, to take full, complete possession of my mind that I may become an instrument in your hands. Bless my brother, bless my sister, work through us. Let us speak and sign with one voice. Father, bless all our guests in this building and online, wherever they are, dear God. Draw particularly close to that man or that woman who is struggling with the decision to obey you. Get close to that person, dear God, that tonight, that decision may be made in your favor. Bless all the little boys and little girls, Father. Remind them that you want them to give their lives to you. Bless the host country of Ghana in a very special way, Father. Touch the hearts of the leaders at every level and work through them to bless this country. Father, I pray this for every other country. Now, dear God, use us as your instruments. Speak words of truth, I pray. Heal the sick. Remove COVID-19 from everyone who has it, who's currently listening right now. Bring healing, dear God, because the world has enough suffering. Hear this humble prayer. Again, pour out a special blessing on all our guests. I offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Our subject, then and now. Genesis chapter 6, reading from verse 1. Genesis 6, reading from verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. And they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Now listen to verse 5 carefully. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. 
that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and it repented the law that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the Lord said I will destroy man whom I created from the face of the earth both man and beast and a creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repenteth me that I have made them verses 1 to 7 describe the wicked inhabitants of the earth in the days of Noah let us go back to verse 5 and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination Think about that. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. What does wickedness mean? In verse 5. Go to Genesis chapter 2. Let's read verse 9. Genesis 2 verse 9. Our subject then and now. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight. And good, and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The word evil at the end of verse 9 is the same word for wickedness in chapter 6 verse 5. It's like saying the lady is beautiful and the next day you say she's pretty. Same thing. Evil, Genesis 2 verse 9. Wickedness, Genesis 6 verse 5. Same thing. Let's take a closer look at this wickedness or evil. Let's go to Psalm 51. Psalm 51, we'll read from verse 1. David is confessing his terrible crimes he committed. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, block out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Now listen to verse 4. Against thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight? The word evil in Psalm 51, 4 is the same Hebrew word for wickedness in Genesis 6, verse 5. So we can look at what David did to get a clearer view of what evil is. What was David confessing? Look at verse 14. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. David was guilty of murder. David, that murder was attached to an act of 
adultery. David is confessing his adultery and his murder. David, the Bible calls that evil. Go to Psalm 50. Psalm 50, let's read verse 19. Psalm 50, 5, 0. Verse 19. Let me pray again. Dear God, as I continue the subject then and now, give more power to my friends and to me and give understanding to everyone listening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Psalm 50, 5, 0, verse 19. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Look at those two statements. They are virtually saying the same thing. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, we have the word evil in that verse again. Same word which we met in Genesis 2 9. Genesis 6 5. And Psalm 51 4. Now in Psalm 50 19, we meet it again. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. And thy tongue frameth deceit. The deceit is the evil. Mouth and tongue mean the same thing. So we have murder, we have adultery, now we have thou shalt not bear false witness. That's all evil. Now think with me. Murder. That's evil. David confessed that. David. He also confesses adultery. That's evil. Psalm 50:19. The mouth speaks deceit. That's evil. Lying deceit. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Evil goes against what? I'm talking to my right side tonight. Listen to you must think. Murder. Thou shalt not kill. Bible said That's evil. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And say That's evil. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And that's evil. Evil goes against what? The law of God. Now, keep this in mind. But say it again. Evil goes against what? The law of God. Keep this in mind. Let us go back to Genesis 6. We read verse 5. Genesis 6 verse 5. You just said correctly. Evil is anything that goes contrary to God's law. Now listen to Genesis 6 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Wickedness is the same as evil. Now now let's say that differently concentrate and God saw that the the lawlessness and God saw that the law breaking was great in the earth and at every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only contrary to the law continually what am i saying in the days of noah there was so much lawlessness that God who loves and is merciful sent a flood and destroyed the entire earth. 
Why? Men and women were living contrary to the law of God. Let's see how the New Testament describes the days of Noah. Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 4. Now in this chapter, Peter is condemning false preachers. Let's read from verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. Peter is condemning false preachers. False prophets. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Damnable heresies. What is a damnable heresy? Anything that goes against the word of God. Regarding Sunday is the Sabbath. Is a damnable heresy. Making a lot of noise in church. Making noise in church. Everyone talking at the same time. And babbling. Nobody knows what the other person is saying. And they're all doing it at the same time. And they call it speaking in tongues. That's a damnable heresy. Who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Now there are two things to keep in mind. Damnable heresies and the way of truth. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. That's verse 1. In verse 2, we have the way of truth. But the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And as people will see the truth and condemn the truth. Because they have been taught damnable heresies. There's something I'll keep hitting and hitting all the time. Because it's a major problem for almost all of Christianity. And for some people, that's the only change they need to make to be truly right with God. The Bible says, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. That's the way of truth. Because so many people have been taught that Sunday is the Sabbath, which is a damnable heresy. People use that damnable heresy to condemn the way of truth. That's a crime against God. It gets worse than that. Look at verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. What is the Bible saying? These false preachers with all kinds of sweet words will turn churches into businesses. Money, 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 money. What's one of the favorite terms they use? Sow a seed. Sow a seed. Sow a seed simply means bring me money. 
and people's minds not enlightened by the word of God they give their hard earned money hoping to get rich and the only people who get rich are these false preachers who turn churches into merchandise read 2nd Peter chapter 2 verse 3 and through covetousness or greed and Nibreso shall there with feigned words, words that are not true, make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now, Peter is saying. Peter is saying judgment is coming on those preachers, and it's a certainty. Now, now why is it a certainty? I didn't know what's up. Peter gives us examples of judgment that came. If you said Peter or Shasiadi, I tell you will be a buyer. Here's the first example. And one year is your first four. Verse 4. It's your moon nine. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. What is Peter saying? If God judged those angels and rebelled against him, he will judge the false prophets and yes and a buyer there and you know one more almost so air can someone you know and Peter gives another example and a Peter sank of us you know five and spared not the old world and a faith if you said that that was in your me one fine say hope but save Noah and mom or do you know what the eighth person I want to so much a preacher of righteousness no we do not count Ukraine bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly so we have two examples of judgment and into your attempt war if you saw me no Peter saying look Peter say God will surely judge false preachers yummy or be a because in the past if you said your chairman he judged the angels that rebelled he judged the world of Noah now he gives another example verse 6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly so Peter is saying if God judge the angels he will judge the, the false preachers if God judge Noah's world he will judge the false preachers if God judge Lord's time, he will judge the false preachers. Judgment on false preachers is as certain as that saith the Lord. It is a crime to stand in a holy pulpit and deliberately mislead people. But these men and women, they know and with all respect, people are easily deceived when their minds are not fortified with this but we're looking at the word evil and I said let's see how the New Testament describes the times of Noah and I took some time to talk about the false preachers let's read verse 5 again let me pray father please God be my voice be my brother's voice, be my sister's mind and hands. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, a preacher of righteousness. 
the 8th person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly Peter describes Noah's world as ungodly Genesis describes that world as wicked. Or evil. And we saw that evil simply is living contrary to what? The law of God. So when we read in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly Take away the word ungodly Give me another word Lawless Disobedient Evil Wicked now let's go to verse 7. Well, let's read 6 and then 7. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemned them with an overthrow. Making them an example unto those. Who after should live ungodly. What's the last word in verse 5? Ungodly. What's the last word in verse 6? Ungodly. Same thing. What am I saying? Or what is the Bible saying? What destroyed Noah's world? Destroyed Lot's world. Now let's go to verse 7. And delivered just Lot. Now the word just there does not mean only Lot. The word just there means righteous. We'll see that in verse 8. But let's finish verse 7. And delivered just Lot. Vexed with the filthy conversation. Of the wicked. The word conversation in that verse means conduct or lifestyle. Peter calls it filthy. Peter said, Anything contrary to the law of God is filthy. Even if it's dressed in a suit. And you put flowers on it. Now the flowers, eguswa. You can put all the flowers you want. On a coffin. Now the You can make the coffin out of gold. And, and, put, and put diamonds on it it still contains a dead body because you cannot beautify death are you following me you can put flowers in a graveyard you can, you can cut the grass always have the cemetery looking beautiful it does not change the fact there are dead people there a, lay, a life contrary to God's law which is the law of Jesus your friend that life is a filthy life. Now let's read verse 8. For that righteous man, in verse 7, he's called just. In verse 8, he's called righteous. Same thing. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing. Vex his righteous soul from day to day with the unlawful deeds. What's the last word in verse 5? The last word in verse 5, ungodly. The last word in verse 6, ungodly. 
just before the last the end of verse 8 what do we have lawless unlawful if it's unlawful it's ungodly if it's unlawful it is evil if it's unlawful it is wicked let me give you a sentence back then what's our subject come on what's our subject then and now back then God destroyed people for living lawlessly now God is the same yesterday today and and forever no matter what your false prophets may tell you the commandments of God have not changed what caused a problem back then lawless living is the same thing now let us go to second timothy chapter three Timothy, whom I, uh, just, uh, uh, we'll read from uh, verse uh, 1 2 Timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 1 2 Timothy, you know, Timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 1 this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come give me another word for perilous Come on. Difficult, that's a nice word. I want a worse word than difficult. Perilous. Dangerous. Hazardous. Life threatening. This know also. That in the last days. That's now. What's our subject? Then. No, no, no. And now. And now. What's the, what was the condition then? Give me one word. Lawlessness. What's the condition now? Lawlessness. Let's continue. This know also that in the last days perilous time shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Think. Men shall be lovers, men and women, of their own selves. What commandment does that violate? One, keep going. Two, you're your own God, you're your own idol. There are some people who only live for themselves. The Bible says this makes life perilous. Bible says, Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. When you're covetous, which commandment are you breaking? Ten and two. Ten says thou shalt not covet. And two says, don't have idols, don't worship them. But the Bible says the man who covets breaks two commandments at least. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, quickly. We read verse 5. Ephesians 5, reading from verse 5. For this you know, that no homonger or unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ or of God. The Bible says, the person who covets is an idolater. Because the thing the person covets becomes what? 
an idol. If you say, Bia, when you pan the Nipiriano, it may be a dear summon the book, a sample of your summon. That's why the Bible says, Thou shalt not covet anything at all. So when we read, In the last days, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, violating commandments one or two at least. Covetous. Violating commandments one and two or two and ten. Proud blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. What commandment is that? Five. Unsightful. Unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Listen to me carefully. Well, listen to the Bible. It says, lovers of pleasure. Bible said, more than lovers of God. So who is that person's God? You must answer me. I'll ask you again. I want you to think. If you're 200 years old, think. Listen to the Bible. Lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Here are the pleasures. Here's God. I love the pleasures more. Who is my God? The pleasures. There are some people, lovers of their work, more than lovers of God. Lovers of their boyfriend or girlfriend, more than lovers of God. Lovers of Manchester United more than lovers of God. Lovers of the Black Stars more than lovers of God. This is no joke. That's now. It's no different from then. Back then, they were living lawlessly. Now, people are living lawlessly. There's a person called Satan. Jesus is enemy. Remember we said last night, when we go to the witch doctor, we're going to the enemies of Jesus. And friends don't hurt friends. Satan hates the law of God. Listen to me carefully. Let me pray. Father, as I try to make this point, please give me simple language. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen question for you what is the only reason why God destroys a person only reason I just, want, I just want one word from you sin sin Bonnie the wages of sin if you say Bonnie God does not destroy because you're short or you're not handsome or you lost your hair he does not destroy you for that God destroys for one reason with a loud voice you tell me what that reason is sin Satan knows that but someone so Satan wants you destroyed. Therefore, he wants you and me to do what? Sin. But the law of God has a convicting power. It keeps telling you that's wrong. That's wrong. Thou shalt not steal. Satan wants to remove the law of God. 
so that people can sin as if there's nothing wrong with it so that one day God will eventually destroy everybody along with Satan we're helping Satan now let me hit it again when you receive the truth and you deliberately practice error now when did you are working hand in hand with satan when you hear the seventh day is the sabbath and you keep honoring sunday you are working against jesus christ and the devil wants you and me to sin and sin and sin so that god will eventually destroy us let me tell you this very simply satan does not like you he doesn't like his angels satan does not have the capacity to love because murderers don't love. He that loveth not his brother is a murderer. Jesus calls Satan a murderer. He cannot love. He just wants you dead. And the only reason God will destroy you or me is because of sin. And sin is the violation of the law of Jesus Christ. Do you know why Jesus died on Calvary? Or why he gave his life? Because of sin. Then you and I cannot continue to cause crucifixion suffering for Jesus Christ. Then they were destroyed because of sin. Which is violation of the law of God. Now, people will be destroyed because of sin. Which is violation of the law of God. While the devil wants you to sin that you might die. Jesus came to give you life. By giving up his life. The devil is trying to take your life. Jesus came to give you life. And yet most people still follow the devil. Through disobedience. Jesus said. The thief comes to steal to kill to destroy i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly as surely as there's a god above now jesus wants to give you life now you may say to me but i'm alive now no without christ you're dead you're just a corpse walking around and going to work the bible says in first timothy chapter five verse six she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she lives what did we read in the Bible? People are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Those people are dead. Because the Bible says someone who lives in pleasure is dead even while the person is physically alive. Jesus came to give us the life that will qualify us for a place in his kingdom. Satan wants you to miss that. And the only way to miss it is to live in violation of God's law, which is the law of Jesus Christ. That's the way it was then. That's the way it is now. But Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. Listen to Ezekiel 33, verse 11, then I'll close. Ezekiel 33, verse 11. 
This text was written for you because Ezekiel is dead. All Jews are so dead. It's for you. Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Let me pray, Father. I'm coming down to the end. Continue to be with us. Please, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn from your ways and live. The verse goes on. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will ye die? Why are you on a path of death? Because you're on a path of disobedience. And Jesus says, come. Get off that path. I am the way. Leave that path. I am the way. What does Jesus say of himself? Not only am I the way, he said, I am the truth. I am the truth. Go to Psalm 119. Let's read verse 151. Psalm 119, verse 151. Just keep in mind, Jesus said, I am the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. Do you have that? Read with, or I'll read for you. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are what? Truth. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That is a statement of truth. Look at Psalm 119, verse 151 again. All thy commandments are truth. Commandment two. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. That's truth. Commandment three. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's truth. Skip four, go to five. Honor thy father and thy mother. Tell me what it is. That's truth. Come on, come on. Speak with energy. Commandment six. Thou shalt not kill. That is truth. Commandment seven. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What is that? Truth. Commandment eight. Thou shalt not steal. Truth. Commandment nine. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Commandment 10, thou shalt not covet. Commandment 4, remember the Sabbath day. I can't hear you. I cannot hear you. I don't ever hear this side. Remember the Sabbath day. Tell me something. What is that? Truth. Now, Sunday's the Sabbath. What is that? Lies. Lies. Who originated lies? Satan. What I'm about to say is hard. Many things I say are hard. But when the, when the surgeon cuts you to save you, that's also hard. Go to, go to, go to James chapter 4. James. Quickly, quickly. James was a brother of Jesus Christ. Now, and then I'll let you go. I make an appeal first. James chapter 4. And I want to make sure everyone has it before I read it. So you don't say, I'm giving you my opinion. Do you have James chapter 4? Yes or no? Do you have verse 12? You do. You all have it. There is what? One lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. That one lawgiver is whom? Jesus Christ. There is one lawgiver. He said the seventh day 
is the Sabbath. Which lawgiver said Sunday is the Sabbath? There is one lawgiver. My listening friends, and I call you friends from my heart. Make a decision right where you are. To please Jesus. By honoring his Sabbath day. This is not salvation by works. This is plain and simple obedience. And Jesus said, If ye love me, keep whose commandments? My commandments. Because I am the only lawgiver. Most Christians keep somebody else's commandments. Start observing God's seventh day Sabbath. There isn't one verse in the Bible text that says the first day of the week is holy. There are many that say the seventh day is the Sabbath. Then lawless living now lawless living and because God is just if he destroy those then he must destroy those now because the cause is the same lawless living whatever your name is especially if you're online there may be a young man called Kofi who needs to start keeping the Sabbath. There may be a young lady, a young lady called Abigail who needs to start keeping the Sabbath. There may be a daughter of God whom he wants to save named Stella who needs to keep the Sabbath of Jesus Christ. There's a family called Frimpong that needs entirely to come to Jesus Christ. There's some professional in a bank called Bediako who needs to surrender the life to Jesus Christ. There's someone somewhere listening to us now who needs to decide. Father, help me to obey you to obey the only lawgiver Jesus Christ. Then they live lawlessly. Then they lived lawlessly. Now people are living lawlessly. That is Satan's program. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I'm speaking to all of you present and online. Don't look around to see who responds. And don't wonder about having this problem or that problem. Just decide for yourself. Who will tell God, Father, I am willing to follow you and obey you. Can I see your help? Keep them up. Keep them up. Stand up. Alright, listen carefully. There's someone listening to me. You are not a Sabbath keeper as Jesus wants you to be. 
You've been keeping Sunday, which is not the day of Jesus. Or you've been keeping no day. But you will say right now, I am willing to keep the Sabbath of Jesus if He will help me. If you will make that decision, that correct decision, come right here. I am willing to keep the Sabbath of Jesus. If you will help me, come. Don't be afraid. Come. I just want to pray for you. I am willing to keep the Sabbath of Jesus. If you will help me, Come, come. Online, I want you to answer this call. I am willing to keep the Sabbath of Jesus. If you will help me, come. Come, come, come. Come, sister, come. God bless you. Yes, Jesus. I am willing to keep the Sabbath of Jesus. Just come closer, come closer, come closer. Come, God bless you. Good, good. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. Bra, also bra. A few more need to come. Come quickly. I am willing to keep the Sabbath of Jesus. But I want you to help me. Come. 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 And you remember, I didn't throw with the one quangle room. No bad in red and flu. The baby, I will go to an umbra. But my dear, for Coco Drobra, rather pet and a winning. Now, when you have a good drop, free nippon baha, a bra bon and yes, dear Tierda, and Tibra, and ferry, me nim sour ferry, then Yamiso nim, send ne a one Nadu or so a two, and Tibra. We are now how we are now one mania, and I drink a one mania, one Nadu, and ready be you saw how in every hole. And unti bra, ye be bon pa ye, tu anamon bra, be biya ujina, bra. Bon mo ding, tu anamon bra. Me huna se wou ba, a se hun wou mou, fa kokodro, fa kokodro bra. A kokodro mou ni e deko osra himre mou. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Ye be bon pa ye, a ke ni pa ba akon wosu oba, o ba ya ni a bon pa ye. A ye wua, e ti tu anamon bra. Bra, ne nyami ye wou. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Nyami shira wou. Come, come, come. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Mr. Cameraman, I'm going to step down a little lower. So you know I'm moving. I'm stepping down a little lower. It may not be an easy decision for you, but it's the right one. And that's all that matters. It's the right one. Somebody else, come, come, come. And no never matter to me, pay any young female, and no never more we pay it, and no never more ride the one home to me a catawso, the baby over corner, and no never more we share a we pay it to an amombra. And Shenipa, yes, to pet and Owaha, and not to an amombra. Jesus will not change his law to suit us. Yami also son and Mra and Mayenia Yenya Peda. He will change us to obey his law. No more better science, he will sit here, man and Mra. All he wants from you is obey me. And my Sabbath is the seventh day. If you don't believe me, next time you see your preacher, ask your preacher for one verse that says the first day is holy. I've kept you long enough, I have to pray. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Every eye is closed. Every eye is closed. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Every eye is closed. Anyone you know, Kasa, Obia Katanini, Ye Bompayo, Ye Bompayo, Pesa would dig Kong Kong when one are Drian Sanya Bompayo, Mistro, Mistro Pa, Bonnie Pia, why you're ready to betcho. Invite those online too. 
mwa mu wa line no lines no so mwa mu wa site ni nyina mo sorry wa wa gye dia na dwitu na mo brani mo na ye bom pa ye na nya me twero wudi enne e won kwa ngoma num mwa mu wa so dem mo won nyina mo asore so nyina wa mo agye die se mo be ye wo setia manya me mo be di ne homeda so mo ni awurade benante enne awurade twero mo di e won kwa ngoma mu se jesus bia na dwi ya awurade won kai mo sa fo ni nyina mtu ana mo mrani mo na mom paye mo nyina amra be bia wo gina bra na mom paye e dan we mo ye be bom paye aha aka ni pa ba kwa wo se oba mi so to na mom bra eni wo nyina akata yesu pe na abue na ni bra na mom paye ye bom paye bra bra ya kokodro every eye is closed bra bra to na mom bra bra e radi be je wo wa bra bo nya sa de tie da i assure you friend na bi ko no wo be wono se nya me wo hom ene wo na nam na wa ye nipa fofro bra ye bom paye so for sure say say wo bom paye na wo hom ne ka kire wo se bra bra na wo be ye nhira okay as bowed eyes closed father in heaven we thank you for the power of the word we thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit on the hearts of those who came. Father, there's some young woman saying, what will my father say, or my mother say, or my boyfriend say, or my colleagues say? Help that young person, that older person, that man, that woman to ask this question. What will Jesus say if I deny him? Please, God move upon the person who needs to move that he or she may make that public choice to obey you we thank you for those who came your sons and your daughters right now as they stand in your presence bless them give them strength that no one will change this decision and bring them back tomorrow dear god for those online who made decisions to obey you dear god to honor yourself of this sabbath if you will help them bless them father and as they leave for their homes let them leave determined that they will obey you bless them sustain them i pray father continue to wrestle with that person who is in the valley of decision we thank you for truth that sets us free set more people free every night we meet i pray watch over us this evening father bring us back tomorrow in jesus name let god's people say amen and amen god bless you come back tomorrow god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you, god bless you my sister